We have the pre-workout sequence. We're gonna go through these stages to prepare you for your hinge session. All right, so I've got the roller out here, I've got my mat, and I'm prepared and ready to help you. So first of all, we're gonna think about the SMR and what, what muscles we're working when we're hinging. So we're talking hinges, you've either got something on the GHD, a Romanian deadlift, some sort of deadlift variation. So we're predominantly looking at our whole posterior chain, okay? Um, that is the whole backside of us, right? So we want to be SMRing that whole lot. So if we have a look here, we've got a roller, foam roller, and we're going to start on that main hinge muscle, um, which is our glutes, and then progress into our hamstrings. So we want to sit down on the roller to start with. This is the very beginning before you work out, and just roll up and down the glutes. Okay, really easy. If that's too light, you could use one of these balls that I've got here, those bigger round balls. Do whatever. Um, you've got help hit your hands on. Um, just you rotate your leg like this, just back and forth. And then a few presses like this as well, which really helps. Go to the other side. We're going to spend like 20, 30 seconds because SMR is just about bringing your awareness to your neurological system and dulling down the stress response that it's been tensioned on all day. Um, we just want to get yourself prepared to working out, right? So you, this is all about preparing yourself to move. So same thing again, moving that leg around just in those sore spots there. Okay. And then want to just have a quick roll over your hamstrings, okay? So you're going to roll back like this. Just being wary of stuff that's behind me. I like to do one at a time. And this is very, very basic. We're going to get into hamstrings a bit more in a sec. So I like to spend like 10 seconds doing that. Because often some people don't even feel that, to be honest. Just moving back and forth there. Feeling that. And then we're going to fast track on to your calves. Now, you could do both calves at the same time. You're just going to make sure you rotate around. Um, but it's even more effective to just put one leg in front of the other. Whoa. And that can be pretty tight, right? And just rolling up all the way up your calf. Okay, remember your calves are a big part of your hinge pattern, that posterior chain. Also the bottom of your feet, which we'll get to in a moment. So again, other calf. I'm going quite swiftly because that's all you really need to do. You don't need to sit here and spend heaps and heaps of time doing this. Yeah, you want to feel good, but it's not, we're not preparing to recover. You can spend a lot more time global rolling, so glo rolling your whole muscles post-workout, right? Or at home when you're actually preparing and recovering. That's recovery style rolling. This is just preparing us to get working. I've also, I've got this here, the box, which for your hammies, I like to do this. So got one of these little round balls, these hard rubber balls, and I like to just sit onto my hamstrings like this, find a little hot spot, and then extend out. Do like four or five extensions, move the ball up my, so it's really good, right up to the base of my hips. So try and pick like four or five spots and you'll feel this. You could do this on a bench or a box. Wooden box is probably the best. So again, that's sitting into that and extending as far as we can. Finding the spots. Extending out your leg. Four or five places. I really feel it in this side. I've got some good stuff going on in here. <laughs> Everyone has their stuff, right? Cool, that's that. Then I would put that away. You don't necessarily need to do that. You could do that on a bench, like I said. Um, the next side, we've done our, pretty much our lower side of our whole posterior chain. The only other thing you could do actually with your ball is what I like to do as well. Just get into your feet. And just roll through your feet. Lots of people miss their feet and there's lots of intricate, intricate muscles in there that do a lot of work for us. This is a great technique here, putting your heel down and just doing this sort of window wiper type movement all the way up and across your foot. Get your ball, pull your feet down and roll right up to your heels, okay? Same on the other side, again, only 15, 20 seconds each side. Right, go up and down your foot first like this. 
and then the window wiper which is really good my feet buzzing already it's a nice feeling hinge is real it's a foundational pattern so we've got to make sure we prepare ourselves well for this good and then yeah i'd get the roller back again um, you could do this at the start once you're used to it as well but we want to roll into our back now i would roll just into our thoracic spine here so you're going to hug yourself like this and we just want to roll up and down you might roll to the side slightly just in between your shoulder blades is the key area if you're if you don't know where your thoracic spine is just up and down here like this good and then i would just sit here like this put your arms up like this and just open a few times maybe like half a dozen times just really opening up that back very good and then this sort of motion just into the edge of your lats so we're on that upper body posterior chain a very important part you could even just move your arm back and forth like this pinning it just under your armpit here and go to the other side again remember we only do these quickly you don't need to do these you don't need to sit into them for five minutes we're just bringing awareness to that area that we're going to use yeah. back and forth here That's good. So that's our SMR done. Quite a lot of SMR for hinge, I reckon, because it's a huge pattern. Um, so you want to get, there's a lot of muscles involved. So next up is stretching. And our predominant stretch really, I think, is the hinge here. You could use a slant board to, to accelerate the stretch, but what you could do is just hang here like this. But we want to hang and just do little pulses like this, Jefferson pulses. Okay, you could do like, yeah, a hundred of these, eh? So I like to do these. Getting myself ready. It's about moving, really. You don't want to just stagnant here. You can do up to a hundred of those. And then come down and do something called the elephant walk here. So the elephant walk is like this. We've probably seen this, sort of down dog position. And you're just walking out your calves and hamstrings. You could do quite a few of these. But as you walk your hand, either your feet closer or your hands closer, it gets harder, all right? But the goal is to get as close as you can and still be able to straighten your legs, okay? A few of those is really, really good. And then the only other one I would do in stretching-wise for your hinge pattern is going out into a long stretch like this. So you've got your leg out on the side pushed out on an angle like this with your hands on the inside of that and then you're going to open up twisting through your thoracic open wide as you can go and then put that elbow back down to the ground so you're getting your hip flexors glutes thoracic really opening up so half a dozen of those and then same thing other side so you're pushing out here and then opening up back down opening up last one all right that's our stretching done so our oscillatory stretching um, next up is a corrective exercise so um, really basic and easy one is the bird dog okay um, or a crawl I think you do on a corrective exercise you want to do something that challenges you for your focus and your coordination so whatever level that is at okay you want to do 20 odd reps of these so bird dogs quite simply like this okay making sure you're really pressing out through your posterior chain here landing at the same time leaving the ground at the same time doing this really really well then you can add tools like this on your back which accelerate your focus and your coordination because you have to focus at keeping it there and then same thing okay you could use a foam roll or a foam pad um, all sorts of things whatever you feel like is good okay again we could be doing some sort of crawling 
motion too, right? To make it harder on us if we're more coordinated and want to accelerate that focus. Next up, activation. So the first one I want most of us to do for activation through your posterior chain is a really easy one. It's called a Superman or a Superwoman, if you like. Okay, you look like this. And you're gonna lift up, squeeze your glutes, press on like crazy, and then come back down again. We'll just do like four or five of these, but you should be able to feel your whole posterior chain open up. You can do this on different angles like this. Okay. Squeezing and really activating. Nice. That's a pretty big one. So you can do a half a dozen of those or so. Then I like to do this one too. So actually start to think about what movement we're doing. Put that around the side here and in and around our hips like this. And then you're actually gonna to start to hinge, pushing your tailbone out, hinging, and then squeezing the glutes and that whole posterior chain, right? Coming down, practicing that hinge. So you might do half a dozen here. But that again, will get all these muscles activating really, really nicely. Good, other things you could do to activate is glute bridges, glute thrusters, stuff to stimulate in through here. Um, these sorts of things are quite good for corrective. So single leg Romanian deadlifts, right? You could do a few of these, right? Just to get that balance and stability, right? It's quite a nice one. And also like this sort of thing while you're in that position, it's quite helpful, right? Because you're getting a stretch, corrective and activation here, okay? So there's no, start to explore with these things because there's not any really rules um, with it. It's just a little sequence which is really helpful for performance. Next up, we've got our foundational movement. So I've got a little bar that I prepared earlier here, okay, which is I'm gonna do Romanian deadlifts. And I've got 30% of 100 kilos, which is a pretty standard lift for me. Okay, and I'm gonna do 10 reps here. So I'm locking in tight, feeling the weight. We're gonna do through 10 reps here. Coming down, feeling what it feels like, pretending that it's real, pretending that it's heavy, feeling all those muscles we've just primed and got ready. Okay. Five. Halfway there. Six, keeping the lats on tight. Seven. Eight. Nine. Good. Already starting to feel them firing up nicely. Then we're going to take these off. We want to go to 60% of what we're going to lift, which is easy when it's 100 kilos because it's just 60 kilos, right? So we're going to take these off. I'm doing this all in real time so that you know how long it takes you to do this sort of thing. Um, but again, remember I'm talking as well. So technically this should only take you 10, 10 maximum 15 minutes, okay? Here we go, so six of these now at 60%. Bracing on, little step back, shoulders in. Whatever your hinge pattern is, it might be some other variation of deadlift, but you've got to do this foundational movement ready. Three, halfway there. Four, nice. Five, one more. Six, great. Put that down. Half, almost warm, almost done. Now what we're gonna do is really fire up our neurological system, so our central nervous system, all right? And I've got this set up here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna really maximize and spy that up. This is the CNS prep, central nervous system preparation. So I'm gonna, you've gotta find something you cannot lift, okay? So I'll get in nice and tight, just same position I was in here. Obviously I can't lift that out of the ground, it's bolted in. I'm gonna brace on and I'm gonna try and lift five seconds. Four, three, two, one. And then because it's a forwards motion, what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna do some plyos forwards. So they look like this, broad jumps or leapfrogs, if you will. Okay, so that's the first one. And I'm gonna get further with my leapfrogs and broad jumps as we go. So just three plyos, five seconds, CNS prep. It's not, doesn't take long. We've got to do this three times through. So again, bracing on, 
Lock it in, five, four, three, two, one. You should be going maximum effort there. Okay, and then landing, softer, three, good. So I'm doing this motion because if you think about it, this is the motion, right? So I'm getting the plyo from that, okay? The jumping format. It's not a squat, so we're not jumping upwards. We're plying forward, okay? Thrusting forward. Last one here. Lock it in and go. Five, four, three, two, one. Nice. And then the biggest jumps you got. So, two, three. Almost hit the bar. <laughs> Obviously, you need a bit of space. And I've got an empty gym right now, so it makes it easy. That's good. So, you should be fully warm, ready to go. All right, give yourself a minute or so. Put the weight on that you're actually going to work with for your working sets for recording. And away you go. That's your pre-workout sequence for your hinge.